this is your channel so i need your support to spread this video to the length and breadth of this social world so without fail subscribe our channel like comment and share these videos with your friends today's episode is related to the marvels of construction engineering you can see from the picture itself the massive size of the structure being transported through sea you are right the condit structure which is also called as gbs that is gravity based structure so we are going to see uh, the platforms condit platforms so enjoy the story of world's tallest structures which were towed through the sea and commissioned in the north sea enjoy the session and happy learning today we are going to see the condit structure that is a gravity based structure concrete deep water structure actually basically it is called and uh, this was uh, developed by the norwegians and the reason why uh, they they have developed two reasons main was chief reason was that here a uh, huge amount of concrete was used and steel of course because it is a rcc uh, uh, basically it has it is uh, it's made of rcc reinforced the concrete steel what you call and uh, uh secondly because uh, this uh, steel structure requires lot of uh, manpower so the Nor norwegian their uh, population is very this sparse so that is why they don't have that much manpower that much uh, welders that much uh, steel fabricators and all that manpower is required so they have devised this another way of uh, developing this massive structure actually and uh, second reason is that uh, the though the north sea is not uh, means in the the place where these uh, structures are located is not that deep but of course it is uh, very rough the environment is very harsh in that region uh, basically the temperature is uh, sub zero many times 4 degree is a normal temperature and uh, the sea is also a uh, lot of wind uh, winds are there on through the sea and uh, it is a very uh, the waves are very strong in that region <coughs> considering all this uh, they have came up with this condit structure uh, this uh, concrete based uh, deep water structure these are actually uh, in my experience i have seen means not i am not giving my example but uh, these structures are there only in that north sea and in norway else i have never came across because i have worked for so many projects and if you uh, if you try to search in uh, any search in also you will not get uh, this condit except for norway no north sea so this is a very unique uh, combination uh, for the norway so let us see how these condit structures uh, were developed and uh, uh, how they are operated what actually is there that all these things we are going to see so basically a uh, concrete deep water structure that is the short form or the compact form is the condit uh, refers to a kind of gravity based structure that is gbs uh, that is support structure held in place by gravity because there is nothing which fastens Uh, this platform to the sea bed uh, it it is hold it is held on its position by means of its weight so it's a massive structure basically uh, uh, okay used as a fixed platform in norwegian water located in north sea that we have already seen so condit structures are rested directly on the sea floor instead of piling as in case of the jacketed steel platforms as this gigantic structure is rested on sea floor its massive weight 
provide stability to it against wind movement and strong water currents it is suitable in shallow water depth up to 300 meter 300 meter of course is a very uh, good uh, i can say a very high water but as per the classification it is a shallow water so actually here we can see this uh, this globules or these are the storage cells plastic plastic tanks okay so uh, i am not sure we have gone through the ballast arrangement i think Okay. Okay. I will give you some idea about the ballast arrangement, what it is, and I think uh, there is one video also in uh, part two of this. Okay. I will explain this. So these cells actually you can see here this uh, uh, glow globular tube kind of a big sort uh, uh, cylindrical uh, volumes. Uh, they are like that honeycomb. Uh, okay. So basically they are hollow. they are made of a very massive concrete and that rcc and uh, these tanks basically uh, one is that it self weight that is the one thing secondly this tanks actually they have some inbuilt arrangement of uh, these tanks are either flooded with water so that once this entire uh, this ballast tanks when, when when they are flooded with water the structure itself is heavy and still it becomes more heavier because of that flooded water and secondly uh, this uh, ballast tanks or <clears throat> concrete uh, storage uh, uh, what i can say uh, storage tanks or uh, provisions Uh, in inside the platform means in the in the base of this platform which is submerged under the water so they are used for storing the produce water and also they are used for storage of uh, hydrocarbons so uh, this is having multiple functions and also it is uh, it is uh, functioning like ballast tanks ballast tank means what i will give you one uh, interesting example what is ballasting so ballasting is a very common term that is used in offshore sector so to understand what is ballasting uh, we should understand how these uh, ships work ships work like for example if there is a ship uh, which is fully loaded <clears throat> which is fully loaded with goods or for example say if there is a fpso which is fully loaded with uh, the storage of hydrocarbon so suppose this fpso is uh, of course fpso is not used for storage of hydrocarbon uh, but le let us say that the fpso is there which is fully lo uh, loaded with the hydrocarbon and there is some other ship which is approaching uh, to take this hydrocarbon so there will be sorry there was some problem actually okay sorry so uh, suppose okay, i forgot where we were mm -hmm. in fpso if one more ship comes uh, to ah, take that right. uh, so when uh, some ship uh, approaches that fpso and there is a oil transfer or the uh, hydrocarbon transfer from fpso to that other ship what happens <coughs> when the ship was loaded fully all the or that fpso was loaded so what happens it sinks inside the sea uh, means means it will sink because if you try to put on the load one after the other loading and loading and loading so that what will happen it will keep on sinking 
so now it is fully loaded okay okay it, it, it is fully loaded so when you will remove the load what will happen what will happen is that it will come up 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 and at a point it may get toppled it may be unbalanced it may get unbalanced so during loading and unloading there is an arrangement called as a uh, ballasting and this ballasting is common in offshore platforms also the tension leg platform spar and all this including this they all work on this principle of ballasting this is very important and this is applicable everywhere in offshore hydrocarbon as well as in marine also as well as in marine transport of lng it is uh, applicable so how uh, it is used Uh, there are certain tanks those are called ballast water tanks like this we can see here so like for example in case of a ship uh, when the ship is fully loaded it travels to that port and one after other one after other uh, other uh, the load is being unloaded to the port what happens it will start coming up so when it will start coming up it may get unbalanced and there can be an accident so what happen there is uh, what uh, to avoid this and to give stability to ship there are certain uh, ballast water tanks ballast water tank means there will be certain uh, <clears throat> walls inside uh, in the hull of the ship where when the ship will start coming up those walls will get open up and because of that the sea water will immediately start flowing inside the hull area there are certain tanks uh, which are reserved for this uh, sea water so when this sea water will start flooding inside the hull area what will happen even though the ship is being unloaded it is again loaded at the same time because of this sea water and it will try to sink because uh, it will add on the weight okay so one uh, ballast water, uh, water tank that water will come inside then the second then the third so as the even though the loading is being uh, taken out the ship will remain stable because of this and when uh, this ship will travel to some other port okay and now it now suppose this is empty and it is filled with this ballast water so now i want to load it again so what i have to do i have to pump out the ballast water and when the ballast water is pumped out the ship will again try to will start coming up because it will get lighter because it will become Uh, it, it will lose that weight because of which it was sinking lose the weight of that water sea water and when it will uh, when that ballast water will be thrown out it will come up and that time when you start loading it will get balance so this way here also the same principle is used uh, the ballast water tank they are filled with water and when they don't uh, means to give the stability okay so if if suppose they want to fill uh, if they want to occupy the same space uh, for the hydrocarbon then they will uh, take out that water and then they will store the hydrocarbon but of course there are certain cells which are reserved for this hydrocarbon because if you mix up all these things then it's not a good so that's the uh, function of this uh, ballast water tanks and uh, on the top of it uh, you have all the things which are similar to all the other platforms only the bottom part or the below jacket what we call that is different in case of uh, steel structure you have that uh, jacketed steel legs which are like a stool your wooden stool but of course they have all the bracing and all <coughs> and the legs are piled on to the sea bed so that is why they cannot be shifted in this case a uh, concrete uh, gravity based structure you don't pile those legs but because of this massive weight of the concrete plus the uh, weight of this uh, ballasting ballasted water and the ballast water tanks uh, it becomes still more heavier and it becomes more rigid and stable so this is all about the uh, concrete uh, gravity based conduit so friends i want to know your feedback how you like this video a small announcement for you all the topics we discussed on offshore are now available in my book fundamentals of 
oil and gas industry for beginners you can directly purchase this book by clicking in the link below in the description box of this video uh, it's a very nice piece of information and uh, each and every topic is discussed in greater details which is not possible uh, in all these videos so enjoy watching this video and thank you once again for watching this video have a fantastic day ahead and have a fantastic learning experience once again thank you